you forget he struggled in the beginning and everybody's like oh man judge is going off the charts he's not going to do this and that and then yeah. boom yeah, exactly it's nice you did no yeah. jair definitely made that i don't think on. so you have a team member who is a big red sox fan behind it the wasn't scenes. it wasn't jair found out it was Derek. that, that, he, that he, he still, must have he still approves it oh that was claudia he said oh that was good i i like that one a lot should make more like that. Derek probably cried. Ironically. Just to, just to make that. Well, ironically, on the other side, we're starting with Aaron Judge on Better Than Box Scores. So he had a two-run dinger last night. He's got a league leading 18 home runs on the season. He has 24 extra base hits in May? Hmm. In May? No, before the end of May, I think. Or is it in May? No, it's in May. Well, we're still in May. He's, he's got one, day. He's got one more day to break I thought, I thought it was April and May. No. Just in May? I thought the record, the whole time I read that, I thought the record was up till May. But no. it's just in May? Oh, yeah. He's got Good 20. Lord. He, you, you forget, he struggled in the beginning. And everybody's like, oh, man, Judge is going off the charts. He's not going to do this and that. And then, yeah. boom. <laughs> this guy is mashing baseballs. Boom. He's hitting for power. He's getting RBIs. He's getting on base. He's hitting home runs. And Soto is right be, right in front of him. They're doing the same thing. Like this, this team, you think about top and bottom. Anthony Volpe gets on base. It's pretty much game over right now, if you want the truth. It's pretty much game over. The guy's got a 26-game on base streak. I know his hitting streak just snapped a little bit. But um, it's pretty much game. This guy gets on base. Those two other guys are going to drive him in, and they're going to win games. They won 2-1 to one the other day. And guess what? Those are big wins. They're playing against Angels teams that they should win. And they won eight to three yesterday. So it is very contagious. He's one extra base hit away with one day left. Does he get it or does he not? I don't know. I mean, Hicks, he loves sinker ball guys. Sinker ball guys can't get above that swing. <clears throat> I think Hicks, he does. Is, Hicks is working in the four seam fastball. He's going to have to get it up, up. Mm -hmm. And there's no, I mean, shoot, he can hit it out of your Yosemite. So it doesn't no, matter that kidding. Oracle Park is, is huge. But I have to give you. I have to give you your props. Oh, really? You were just a year early. You said last year, bro, big dog, I see Volpe could be in the leadoff spot by, by like, all-star break or something. Okay. <laughs> all-star break of the next season. Yeah. So I got to give you your props. Thank now, you. part of it was because of LeMahieu. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if they would have put him in the leadoff spot. Interesting. But good Lord, has that worked out? Because he's giving you gold glove defense. Oh. And I know we're talking about Judge. I know I get that. But to me – Judge doesn't happen without Volpe taking, taking ownership and really making making the heat like he's just taking advantage of. Hey, we can't put Volpe on for for free. And then who you got hitting behind? Who you got hitting behind? Oh, Yudji. Oh, you got you got any horse you really want to think about? You got what? you got Stanton. You got, I mean, Rizzo's not doing the best. You got a Verdugo, excuse me. I should have said Verdugo first. Nobody saw him coming back in, in a cleanup spot either. These guys are doing really well. You know, you could say all the words you want about them. Great, awesome, unbelievable, uncharacteristic. Who saw Luis Hill coming? I mean, there's, there's a lot of storylines for this Yankee team, and they don't have some of their key cogs. Uh, you know, Jonathan Lewisica, another guy in the bullpen, which they need. Um... And Garrett Cole, I mean, Jesus, when he comes back, what's going to happen? So it, there's going to be some interesting questions to be answered, but when you're winning, it doesn't matter. Keep going. I know Clark Smith went down. So there's – the gods always have a way of working out. You don't want to see a guy go down like that. He's probably been their second-best pitcher this year, you know, if, if we're going by numbers and the way he's pitched. So they, they really, really have some good things going here. So a couple things. One, the record for a Yankee in a single month – is not getting touched. Joe for DiMaggio. For right, May this is for May. I'm yes. saying for any month, just to clarify for any, I don't want to get DMs later being like, oh, you had to start wrong. Joe DiMaggio had a franchise record, 31 extra base hits in 1937. We all remember <laughs> that. But also, 31. not to be Debbie Downer, but Clark Schmidt hurts. It does. I mean, he'll, he'll be back. It's a latch strain, but he shut down for four to six weeks. It'll take probably another month or so. To ramp up. We're looking at late in the season at this point. We're in June, right? So he ramps it back up starting maybe mid-July. And then you need another month. So now we're deep into August. It's fine. 
And yes, Cole is probably going to make his first rehab start early next week, I think Tuesday. So it does work out when you have media asking Aaron Boone, like, what are you going to do when Cole comes back with the rotation? 90% of the time, someone works. gets hurt in the meantime. But you're right. Schmidt was at 2.52 ERA and 11 starts. He was dealing this year. And like his last nine, he's been even better than the 2.52. So, mm-hmm. it, yeah, that's a tough loss. That's anybody's tough loss. This is where the depth comes in. Mm-hmm. Yep. So they're in good shape. Hurry up, Garrett. No, just kidding. No, don't hurry up. <laughs> I was kidding. You know that. Take your damn time. But the Baltimore Orioles are still moving and grooving. Still doing them quietly, I feel like. Quietly. But kind they're, of. They're... Except for Gunnar Henderson. Oh, my God. He's so awesome. <laughs> he's, he really is. He's, 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 so one of my awesome. Top, he's one of my top five players right now. Like, I'm putting oh, no doubt. in the sense of, like, somebody you should watch play. Like, to me, you, you can't turn the TV off right now if Tucker's swinging, Seager's swinging, Gunnar Henderson's swinging. Judgy swinging like those guys currently right now are unbelievable. And Henderson, Gunnar Henderson is doing it in the leadoff spot, which is so hmm. awesome. I love, I love the not resurgence, but just the change of what people think a leadoff hitter should be. He's not Kyle Schwarber. I get it. Schwarber hitting 47 dingers hmm. from the leadoff spot. He's on pace for like but, 54. But he hits 54. He's on pace for 54. Yeah, he's not going to get 54. It shows, and I think it's like 123 RBI he's on pace for. Yep. yep. So, Those are to me, that numbers. shows what kind of depth you have. We talk about the Braves and how Kelnick and Duvall, the bottom half of that lineup, need to pick it up from a banging lineup. This whole lineup, the Orioles' whole lineup, Colton Kowser was hitting seventh or eighth for I don't know how long until they were finally like, look, we got to move you up. And they just – the whole – Westberg was hitting, hitting eighth, eighth or ninth. And that's where he's getting all these RBIs from, and you only lead off one time. So the whole fact that, oh, he could hit 54 homers from the leadoff spot, it's only once. It's only once. He has one chance to hit a solo dinger. Can you also make the case that on a team like this, it means more because of the depth you have in your lineup? Like some teams don't have it, six or seven through nine. Like you just mentioned – there's there's going to be mashers for Baltimore seven through nine, and if they're not mashing, they're going to hit the bench or go back to the minor leagues, and they've got five other guys from AAA to bring up. You know what I'm saying? You like mean, if you're on you a team, matters more. if you're on a team where you look and you're like, ah, they're kind of top heavy. Seven through nine is is not great. Like actually, the Dodgers have been like that most of the year, right? Dodgers too. And you're yeah. leading off. It has a little less to it because you're often actually stepping up, and no one's on for you, right? Because there were just a few outs before you. In this case, like you mentioned. Dudes are getting on for him. They're not solo homers from the leadoff spot. They're not, but you also can't move them. You can't move them to, like, especially as a lefty. You have Adley. When Adley's facing right-handers, he's doing well. But maybe, at, you know, you'd switch. I, I, don't, I don't know that you want to switch anything. They're, they're doing unbelievable. But with the bottom of that lineup, I, I don't disagree with you. Maybe you think, like, hey, the bottom of this lineup is getting on. We want somebody right away. Because normally you'd think that many homers – Hey, let's slide him into three, four spot. Maybe even well, now. Not four nowadays. Two not nowadays. Two or three. But hey, we got it. We got to get more RBIs out of out of Gunner. You don't think about that. You don't mm-hmm. think about that with that with that depth in their lineup. I, I just feel like they're the less you hear about them. I mean, no Gunner Henderson. I feel like the better they're doing. Like it, it's weird to say. Like they've always they've never been that team like the Yankees they're always talked about in the Mets and that's this I think they like they're not I'm not saying they're under the radar but they're just they're just going here you know what I mean they're just grinding they're just climbing that mountain and just going and who are you more scared of a team that is just an absolute locomotive going downhill hmm. or a team that's a rot to me I would say that the Yankees are a rocket ship. The Yankees are like oh, we didn't know what we were gonna get yeah. but man they Boom. exploded out they're doing it yep the Orioles are like Come on this ride. Come on this ride. We're, we're, just, we're just moving downhill. There's nothing stopping us. Who are, right who now, are you afraid of? Well, I'm afraid of the Orioles because they took three out of four for one from the Yankees, and they haven't played much against each other. So I would say the Orioles right now because they're – I know they're not in first place, but still they – when they play more and they play against each other, then my answer might change. But these guys are all silky smooth just going, riding that wave, man. They're young. Mm. That's, that's what I like Unlike about you. Them. What? Dude. I'm so much younger than you are, what? but, and more mature, but I didn't say that they're young. 
And to me, I think there's an edge. I think the Yankees have more of an edge than they've had in the last few years with a Stroman and with a Verdugo in that lineup where mm-hmm. you're like, guys kind of edgy and they're not just kind of boring and vanilla. Young teams have an edge that you're like, I wonder if those dudes were like out partying last <laughs> night and now they're coming in and they're still getting after it. And then who's the first dude that strolls up to the plate? Gunnar Henderson. He kind of reminds me of what Acuna was doing last year mm-hmm. in the sense that, like, with him at the top, I'm afraid of some nerfies with the with the Orioles. <laughs> he just can do some stuff early in the game that sets a tone. And it's like, yep, here we go. Hey. Oh, yeah. I, I'm. That's not a team you touch if you're trying to get a no-run first inning back going. Actually, just it is. I want to clarify. <laughs> also want to clarify. <laughs> when, when you are talking about a young team and – thinking, oh, they went out last night. Going out nowadays is, is actually a virtual hangout. It's called Fortnite. or On, on the sticks. Yeah, Get the something headset else on, on the sticks. Yeah. And it, they might be like, yo, I, I, I went to bed at like 1.30. I, mm-hmm. was like, I was like deep in whatever the freak they call it. I don't know. I don't play that stuff. But call of Duty. Me call neither. of Duty. All if, that. if they wanted to play Sega Genesis, Madden 95, Mortal Kombat, mm-hmm. I'm in. Hey, everybody. Be sure to like and subscribe for more content. We're back here every weekday, all year long, so do not miss an episode. The videos are coming in all day. Here's another video you might enjoy. Baseball, the way it should be covered, 